We should have started video transmission. Yeah. Hey, what's going on YouTube? Kenny and Marcus here today. We're going to talk about a bunch of things. A lot of things heating up in the markets. A lot of very interesting, interesting things. So what you're seeing here in front of you, uh, actually, let's start with this. If you're new to this channel, Redcliffe Research is an independent research firm that deals very heavily uh, with um, anomaly detection, signal detection, and we trade off of that. Uh, we do do investments, we do do long-term portfolios, but for the most part, we do a little bit of both and we try to keep it fresh, keep it special. Uh, yeah, so today we are gonna talk about the Fed, politics, inflation, and we definitely gotta talk about our contrarian sentiment indicator, which I didn't put on the slide, so maybe we won't <laughs> talk about it, Marcus. We almost got it right, man. No, almost no, it's got okay. It right. It's okay. Uh, you know, <laughs> we'll talk about it right now. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good about the contrarian sentiment uh, indicators. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, we had a lot of questions this week, and it was a really good week uh, for some of us, but a lot of chop, a lot of chop. So I want to talk about the chop. I want to talk about all this and, and why I think all this stuff is happening. A lot of really good questions. We've got Richard in the house, Bem in the house, and Richard number two in the house. Richard, who I might owe a hoodie to, but I don't think so. Richard, <laughs> you see the uh, you see the S and P spike? Bam! We are not still bearish on tech. We are slightly overweight tech, neutral to overweight. Uh, I'm like, I'm like, so like if I'm saying neutral is fifty percent, like market weight, I would say Fang names. I'm like five point one tech. I'm like mm -hmm. about a six or a seven. I'm still like an eight or a nine on energy. So if that kind of helps you think about it. Also, uh, Richard, number one, a.k.a. Canada Richard. I don't know. Maybe yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Richard Samsky is. is <laughs> yeah, yeah. Canada I don't know who's Richard number one, but it's a Richard. I might owe him a hoodie soon. Yeah. <laughs> hoodie Richard. <laughs> yes, hoodie Richard. Uh, what's up, uh, Talk1XYC? Uh, what's that, New York City? No, not New York City. XY City. <laughs> Talk1, uh, yeah, I don't know. Zeno, yeah. York City. Luke, what's up, man? Luke's in the chat, as always. What's up, Luke? Sweet. What's up, Ben? All right, let's go through this. Ah, uh, yeah, Richard, uh, Richard, hoodie, Richard, check it out. See the spike up here? This thing's moving, boy. If I went to the one-day chart, this doesn't look good for you. It's not looking good. About to get 440. Jordan's in the chat too. Jordan, what is up? Got all the cool peeps in the chat. Man, we've had some really good conversations in the general chat in Slack, man. So I do want to answer some of those questions that came through and just kind of talk about it uh, today. But uh, super interesting week. Marcus, what do you think? Do you think we're going to owe uh, Richard a hoodie? Uh, probably yes. Um, to be honest, uh, I, I think we, we will eventually, um, but not for the reasons you think. I think it'll be some kind of plot twist. Like right at the end? Yeah, like right at the end. It's like, 4 to 39, 50. <laughs> 50. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, um, Bem says I, I need to join the crazy day trading. Um, you know, I, you I, do? I, I could, you do it. but... You do. Um, you know, it, it would just turn into me pitching gravel and uh, other, you know, hey, buy more Caterpillar. Like, yeah, Marcus would this. essentially, he would essentially be like, hey, don't buy that. That doesn't look good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Marcus is a day you, trade. You, you'd end up buying like one stock if I was there. <laughs> it wouldn't be as much fun. Yeah. Hey, uh, Marcus, you're uh, Jordan's saying your microphone's uh, a little low. I think you sound good on my side, but oh, I can't man. be. Okay. You sound perfect from here. He okay. has improved his microphone game, but just maybe just uh, okay. I'm thinking it's the you know the the Streamlab mm -hmm. the volume microphone thing. Yeah, we have that. Just yeah, slide it over. I, I did slide it, but no, I'll I'll fiddle here. with it while you're talking. I, I noticed that you're uh, you're logging into uh, Kenny at uh, or info at Redcliffe Research because it says you're Kenny Keo. Mm. So okay, okay, Moist. okay. Uh, all right, let's go, let's go, let's talk about this. Oh. So this is the 10 year yields uh, rolling over like a mofo. This is a big deal for me because um, essentially this is why we changed our stance on tech uh, for a bunch of reasons. So like if you look at- Take care, Mike. Sorry, sorry, Kenny, Mike has to go. Um, thanks, Mike. Take care, brother. Have fun at your daughter's birthday party. Oh, yep, Mike, take it easy, bro. Uh, okay, so let me, let me show you uh, this. So as you can see, if we were looking at this the, this yield chart, right, from the technicals, you know that we love horizontal channels. So essentially, this, this was the channel that we were monitoring, uh, and it broke into this channel, excuse me, <clears throat> and it did this. And we really thought, most people thought it was going to break, right, and do this. 
But not only did it stay in this channel, we clearly lost support here, right here. And now we're definitely rolling over like 100%. There's like no ifs, ands, or buts uh, about this rollover. So because of that, uh, really, really had to, to think back, look at what happened with the CPI, look at what happened with this. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's still a good time for tech. So this year is not the year. And I said my macro trends are really hard to predict, but you don't want to be stubborn. You don't want to get caught up in the chop because you have the wrong uh, kind of uh, hypothesis. Uh, so we're definitely switching over. We're back to we're back to tech. Marcus, what do you think? What do you think about the yields? Yeah, no, it, it makes sense to me. Um, I, I think it's a smart play. And I, I do think that um, we're going to see a little bit more growth in S&P 500. But once we move a little further in our agenda here, we'll find out why that's going to come back down to earth once uh, regulations start to, uh, you know, Im impose a little bit of their, their will on the tech sector. Yeah, so this is, uh, again, S&P closes at all-time highs <clears throat> as long inflation jitters fade. Essentially, <clears throat> if you actually stripped out the CPI, data. Uh, closer looks showed that much of the price surge came from items such as commodities, airfares, and therefore are likely to be temporary. And, you know, the idea here, though, is I kind of think it, I kind of don't think it, uh, you know, and, you know, all the talking heads talk about, like, uh, employment, uh, you know, we're, we're raising, uh, we had, what, like t 2 million 2 million folks just straight up retire. They're like, mm, I'm good. This is the time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, then, and then not only that, the uh, it's it's hard to find people to work these like jobs at even $15 an hour at this point. You know, uh, my brother owns like two restaurants and he's having a hard time just hiring folks like, like straight up $15 an hour cannot hire a dishwasher. So, I mean, I think those, those rates stay inflated. You can't, you can't, you can't pull that back. Talking heads are talking about it, but I agree uh, that that's one. Um, but, you know, other things, too. Oh, and also, if you haven't uh, ever looked at it, if you ever look at the rate of inflation and it looks like it, it breaks it down through sectors, like from 1900s all the way up till today. One of the interesting things you'll find, actually, just, excuse me. When you talk about this, um, like clothes and all that stuff, your money is buying way more clothes nowadays than it did. Like the same, it's like actually uh, it's like completely level. Right. But then the thing that you spend the most money on is exactly this, right? Like not just commodities, but vacation. Like vacation has definitely, you're losing money. Mm. Like more expensive to go on vacation. All right, let's talk about the next thing, which is, oh, here's an interesting thing. So this is Bitcoin correlation, if you were wondering. So when we didn't know what the CPI numbers looked like, Bitcoin went on its surge leading up to it. But as soon as it got published and everybody kind of said, OK, this is a nothing burger inflation wise, then Bitcoin kind of receded back to like where it's sitting at right now. And the reason I'm saying that is uh, I think it's really important because if you think about it, like this is one of the first times that Bitcoin really ran against it. Like, it, you know, like I think uh, we were talking about Mike to Mike about like, is this a hedge against inflation? Uh, and I usually say probably not. Um, but this is an interesting spot, uh, especially now. What are your thoughts, Marcus? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, whenever the consumer price index starts uh, going up, you'll, you'll, I, I don't know, we'll, we'll get to it a little bit later on, but I, I've got some pretty strong thoughts on the whole uh, Bitcoin piece. Okay. Uh, Bem's asking, when did we, uh, when are we jumping into uh, Coinbase? Uh, only, only because where is it i'm trying to show him that we are in coinbase and he missed it <laughs> where did it go uh, uh no nah, i don't know uh we called it out in the general chat though Bem. uh we're in coinbase we we picked it up uh yesterday so we're in we're in in it picked it up for our long-term long-term portfolio all right all right let's talk about g7 Marcus, yeah. G7, G7, uh, like seven, G7? Is that, yeah. is that... seven biggest, uh, biggest economies get together and play uh, big, big dog games, yeah. <clears throat> basically try to try to uh, control the narrative. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's going to happen? Well, they're going to talk about all these things. Why am I bringing this up? Uh, thematically, 
thematically you should be looking at some of this stuff so um these are the things that whether you think it's it's actually the things that they care about or not you should start to think about them in terms of thematic investing like are these some themes that you could kind of i don't want to say front run because obviously they're like really uh really at the forefront but if you haven't thought about um some of these things like climate change obviously you have a lot of you guys holding uh, ev stocks etc uh and clean energy stocks but um free and fair uh, trade, uh, that's a big one because it's going to be a lot of anti-China policy, anti-Russia destabilization policies. And um, yeah, here's an interesting though, strengthening our resilience against future pandemics. I'd love to see this and I'd love to see what this playbook looks like. Uh, I'd love to see the readout because um, they're definitely, this is I think the high ROI trade that it's one of those ones where like, oh, we just got through it. Uh, nobody's going to invest in it. You could probably get this trade on pennies on the dollar, um, and I don't know what that looks like. And you know, but but still, if if you think about this sector, this is one of the ones where you, I think you can pull out some alpha here uh, if you're early enough. So you know, you'll be definitely parking your money in case of emergency. But I think if you get it, if you get in quick enough, uh, put a couple pennies there. There's definitely one of those hundred x return situations. So. Yeah, I mean, just just look look at what happened to um, the the medical stocks when uh when the vaccine was being developed like it, it was a nice big jump <clears throat> also just kind of from a macro level i think it's really interesting that you know most of these countries are western countries right and most of these countries haven't had to deal with anything like covid um whereas you look at some some countries in the east uh you know like taiwan singapore china <clears throat> and um they dealt with uh what was it the the avian swine flu something like those i forget what it was called sars right um they they dealt with that back uh however many years ago and they were able to respond much quicker so um kind of to your point i think that the the countries in the g7 are going to start to implement some of those lessons learned just like countries like taiwan singapore china did and um yeah th there's going to be a lot of money to be made when when something like this happens again because it will and um yeah. and i i think um having the flexibility and the money to respond to it appropriately is is going to be what they'll they'll iron out and then once that does come out then we can see who's going to be the biggest beneficiary of it and like you said money is going to be parked it's not going to be a day trade <laughs> but you can yeah. definitely uh pick up yeah. some gains in, in the long term and i want to i want to sound smart here it's it's uh, h151 which oh. is the avian H1N1 is uh, swine flu. Uh, okay. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> well, one of these days I'll tell you. I'm a doctor. I had to memorize it for, I had to memorize it for a test. Let me just say it yeah. that way. You probably know what I'm talking about yeah, now. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, so this is a picture of uh, our president, uh, Biden, uh, at the Midden Hall, uh, 352nd SOW, Spe Special Operations Wing. All right. Uh, Marcus, this came up in the general chat. Wanted to get your opinion on it. Yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Did you just, okay. My opinion is that this is, um, this is going to be the, uh, the, the zone of MP3 players, um, uh -huh. that, like the uh, first, but that, not the best. that when, when Facebook rolls it out, everyone's going to be like, what the fuck is this? Um, and ignore it. Why do you Largely. need two cameras? I want to know. What's that? Why do you need two cameras? Um, one for yourself and one for your buddy so you can like you know if your buddy forgets his you can you can hand it over and be like here you go man now you can take pictures well i mean i guess this is like so there's two things right i guess if if i'm really future mapping if i'm trying to tech map like you're gonna get smaller so ideally it's a watch or a contact lens right that's mm -hmm. the smaller part and then the bigger part is like your your car so that's i think the whole ecosystem with a car i'm gonna draw a car right here yeah you know what i'm saying like that's a good car uh, <laughs> that doesn't look like a potato at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, Jay says it wasn't so much the government responses uh, as opposed to just the inherent culture of the East. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely culturally. Yeah. I think that's that's going to be something that's a lot easier for the West to swallow now that it's been very become I'm very real too. So yeah, I, I agree with that. Definitely yeah. agree with it. Uh, yeah, no, but so my point is, um, there's going to be, I think, uh, the watch, if you're looking for a play to front run or a derivative play, look for folks that have that make small materials, uh, folks that do uh, are, are in, in, in the in the space that make things smaller, uh, any nanotech companies, 
Uh, obviously, semiconductors are going to be a big one, the ones that have the smallest. And, and uh, I would say IBM because they said that they, uh, they have a two nanometer chip, but uh, uh, that's a little bit of a misnomer. You got to read through the white paper on that one. And Angel has a really good breakdown about why uh, the IBM two nanometer is just snake oil. Uh, but anyways, uh, you definitely want to look at companies like ASML, i.e., uh, hint, hint, <clears throat> any Internet of Things companies. A uh, couple, couple things like that. But anyways, that's just some ideas because I think this is the thing, right? So, I, like, again, they're, they're small. For me, they're small and there's large. Large is like I go to sleep in a car on the way to work and it drives me or I watch some videos on the way to work. And so I'm productive. So we get GDP back here and we get GDP back here. I know that's wazoo. Yeah, no. But, no. I mean, that's, that's how I, I think I, about this. No, yeah, man, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, for, for me, from just like a, uh, a business point of view, um, Facebook has zero experience in the consumer electronics field um, compared to companies like Samsung, who are like they make phones and all kinds of stuff, and they still have a hard time competing with Apple Watch. So I think it's really surprising that Facebook is trying to break into this sector, um, especially given that they're not exactly the... Um, I don't know, the poster child for, for mm -hmm. growth and innovation these days. I think it's uh, telling, though. I think it's telling to to where they're at in their, like, growth cycle. Like, they know that only old people are on Facebook. Yeah. And, like, they know that that's not going to last forever. Yeah. Like, you can see it, right? Yeah, yeah, So yeah. I think the writing's on the wall for them is why. So. Ooh, okay. So OIH news. Somebody took a satellite photo. Uh, but let me read this to you. Iran's crude oil and gas condensate exports are now trending back down again due to a logistical constraint caused by the lack of spare VLCC super tankers. Uh, 70 million barrels of condensate uh, due to insufficient demand from China. But uh, I dug into this a little bit. Uh, so cool. Somebody somebody uh, took a picture, uh, satellite photos and stuff like that. But uh, apparently, here's the breakdown anyways. So uh, in terms of what could potentially be, and this is not W2I crude, so it's not essentially exactly the play that we're on or anything like that, and it shouldn't, um, well, here it is, as well as West Texas light crude right here. Um, but anyways, the idea is this is South Korea, uh, Iranian oil, or condensate, which is like a natural gas. It's not exactly the same. Um, there's a different process to, to making it usable, but like here is where we're at. So even if they put some barrels into South Korea, eh, I'm, not, I'm not really that interested. I don't think it moves the needle, but I just wanted to bring it up. What are your yeah. thoughts, Marcus? Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I think um, the, I, I don't think that the market in South Korea is big enough to uh, blow anything up further than maybe a, a couple of, of, of uh, cents on the dollar. Um, maybe if it was China, that'd be a different story. In fact, if it was China, it would be a different story. But South Korea market is not um, going to turn that tide by itself, I don't think. Richard's saying Facebook has Oculus. Yeah, and AR right. I forgot thing. about Oculus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I forgot. to see. Uh, it needs to be smaller, though. Oculus needs to be smaller. If it can get smaller, I'm on board. Not small enough yet. It needs yeah. to be the size of glasses. Yeah, well, they, you know they, I mean? they've got the ones where you can put, like, your cell phone in it, and then the, the cell mm -hmm. phone runs it, you know? But um, yeah, yeah. but that uh, I don't know. Again, the 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 market for VR isn't very big. Um, there's a big potential market, but the actual like numbers of people buying them are still not. Um, <clears throat> it's 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 a lot like 3D printing in that there's a lot of potential, but the um, the reality of it hasn't quite landed. Like I, I've got a I've got a VR system here at home, but um, we rarely use it just because there's not many games that we like to play that often. You know. Oh, shoot, Marcus. We got almost uh, – we have 17 concurrent viewers. Uh, Y'all, if you hit the like button, I will donate a dollar to charity. If you uh, guess a book on the back shelf, you might be able to see some books now. The the the, the Zoom is actually in. <laughs> Shit. Anyways, if you can guess a book in the back shelf, I'll multiply by 10. Last time we did this, uh, we uh, we gave uh, 250 bucks away to St. Jude's. Why 250? It's supposed to be 50, 50 likes. We had 50 likes. I was going to get 50, 50 bucks, but then uh, – Colby uh, guessed uh, a book on my uh, Audible, uh, so I gave I didn't give him the ten multiplier, but I gave him the five. Mm. So I felt generous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, South Korea is mo moving towards hydrogen. Um, I am not tracking the hydrogen market in South Korea, but I'd love to hear more about that. If you got something, put it in the chat, man. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, and uh, Richard says uh, Facebook is doing the Apple thing. Take something and improve. Yeah, I, I think there's something to be said for that. You know, um, there's the uh, the the business model of the second mouse gets the cheese, right? Because the first mouse is dead in the trap. <laughs> so um, there is something to be said for that. Um, you know, the iterative improvement on what someone else has done. Uh, and maybe they will pull it out. But I just off the top of my head as a knee jerk reaction, uh, hearing about an, a, a Facebook watch, um, I just I, I wonder what their angle is, I guess. So there's an Estonian saying, so I'm told there's an Estonian saying. It might be yeah. a different saying. It's probably actually a Chinese saying or something. I don't know. <laughs> but it says, I don't care what color the cat is as long as it kills the mouse. Oh, that okay. <clears throat> okay. I, like that. I just wanted to say that. I don't even know if it makes sense to, yeah. to what we're talking Yeah, no, that's, that's a good one. I'm going to finish my <laughs> hot pocket while I ponder it. Okay, that's good. Now <clears throat> you're going to go from noodle boil to hot pocket boil. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, here's a big deal. Bipartisan Senate group reaches infrastructure deal without tax hikes, but leaders still need to sign off. It looks like this is going to happen, boys and girls, which uh, if it does happen, um, this is big for Fang. Like this is a big tailwind for Fang. Uh, you know, if, if you kind of uh, dig into the financials and, and how taxes affect it, like your, your actual tax rate uh, that you kind of impose on these folks, right? Like it's literally in your discounted cash flows. Uh, the big tech names definitely stand to gain the most from this. So a group of 10 Democrat and Republican senators reached an agreement in the infrastructure that would not hike taxes. Big, big deal. Big deal. That's crazy. You know, I'm, I'm still very curious where that money will come from, if not from taxes. Yeah, mm -hmm. right here. It's not clear. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, so, you know, uh, we put Tommy to work and uh, Tommy... Uh, dug into this bill it's 449 pages uh but he he, he put it together uh, a bunch of just you know just kind of interesting things here but we'll just kind of go over it but uh this is actually the antitrust anti-monopoly bill that we were talking about uh and, and you know kind of getting us on the right side of the trade and this is why um i'm not fully bullish on fang i think it's it's a little bit overweight i think uh we're neutral to overweight on fang but the idea is um uh like here it says Bills and big tech regulation have bipartisan approval. We talked about that for the other bill. So you can see, I'm showing you this too, because there's a lot of bipartisan support on almost freaking everything nowadays. So things are going to get through. It looks like things are getting through. Um, okay, it was penned by the committee, and it's going to be released. 16-month investigation. You all watched that. You all watched that, uh, the horror show uh, <laughs> when those, uh, those uh, really dated senators are asking about the, why their phone doesn't work or whatever like that. <laughs> Yeah. But still, it's a it's a super interesting Files concept. Files are anyway. in the computer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh God, exactly. Uh, uh, but uh, more more points to that. Um, Republicans and Democrats agree that these companies have too much power, which is like the biggest thing, right? So, will we see a breakup? Will we see a shakeup? Maybe. I think so. I think yeah. so. I I I think there's going to be a lot of shakeup coming down the road. Um, some of it will be good. Some of it will be bad. Some of it will mean that there's um you know less uh, uh or excuse me some of them will result in more uh choices for the consumer but that might come at a cost like instead of having all these nice free services where you just log on to google and you've got like what 16 gigabytes for free like they might have to start charging for it because they aren't able to sell your information the way that they do now or whatever the case might be um, it's definitely going to impact their business models and their bottom lines and um, we might see more options as consumers, um, but the companies themselves are almost certainly going to end up taking a, a hit in the pocketbook. So you'll, you'll see a lot of resistance from them. Yeah, I, I just think that we're just going to have a better sense of uh, competition. I really do. I really do think that some of these companies like I mean, Apple's acquiring like 16 companies a month. I mean, how does anybody ever become the next Apple when Apple does that? Yeah. And I'm okay. I, mean, I get it. I, I get like we're getting cheaper goods and we're getting better Apple products, maybe. But at the same time, you want to have that those next next guys the kind of kind of fight for that. Um, and I don't think it ever happens. Like Instagram had a, could have been right up there with everybody, but yeah. Facebook bought them. Yeah. And then if you didn't know, like <laughs> here's an. <clears throat> Here's one that you really got to think about. So Craigslist, right? Like eBay brought, bought Craigslist. So if you ever wondered why Craigslist didn't take off or get any better, that's why. 
Like they bought him and they just like left him there. <laughs> they just left him in the dirt. Don't improve, but keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. But don't improve. Like li- literally go to Craigslist right now. And I feel like I need to show this. Let's go. Let's see. I'm, I'm pretty sure it still looks the same. I'll, I'll laugh if, if it is. And, uh, but look, well, watch. You Let's know, go eBay looks the same as it did from like 1997. So I'm pretty sure Craigslist. Has yeah. But, but Marcus, there this is, is Craigslist. There it is. They bought this for like X millions of dollars. It did nothing with it. They didn't monetize it. They didn't do anything. They just wanted to make sure it didn't compete with eBay, right? Yeah. Like, look, look at that. That is 1999 Craigslist. Like, come on, tell me, tell me, I'm not, I'm wrong here. I don't think you're wrong. Um, I think uh, they is- they knew it was working and didn't want to change it because they're scared of change. I mean, if you go to the eBay website, I'm sure it'd be exactly the same as as what you remember <clears throat> from when you know you were like 17 years old. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, if you're going to pay, how much money are you going to pay for this company right now? Like, look at this. This is a company, right? They, they paid hundreds of millions of dollars for this. Well, light. you know, going back to your earlier quote, doesn't matter what color the cat is as long as it gets the mouse, right? Yeah. Uh, eBay looks stellar. Comp- hey, look, we're going to look at yeah, eBay. We got to look at eBay real quick. We got to look at eBay. I feel like you're setting me up here. I feel like they've changed. <laughs> I mean, look at this. They got bigger icons. They've yeah. changed their fonts. Uh-huh. You know, it's colorful. Yeah. It it's looks... not quite Amazon, but it looks pretty good, yeah. you know? Okay. Okay. You know? But yeah. Anyways. Everyone uh, uses Kijiji. What is Kijiji? I feel like if I Google that, I'll be put on a list or something. Yeah. Don't, don't. Google I don't want to Google that. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Anyways, let's go on with the bill. Here's the bills that are, are looking like they're going to get some traction. So American Innovative Choice Online Act. Um, I'm just showing you this because, again, like think about thematically how to set up your trades, right? The Platform Competition or Opportunity Act, Ending Platform Monopolies Act, all these have bipartisan support. Augmented Compatibility Competition competition by Enabling Switching Services. Marcus, that's your favorite thing, service switching. Uh, They knew about it. it. Yeah, the Merger Filing (laughs) Fee Modernization Act, all have bipartisan support. And if you didn't know, again, I put Tommy against this, right? Tommy went nuts. Oh, uh, he mapped is. he mapped the entire network to show support. So obviously, this is showing modularity, and he probably didn't color code these. Yeah, he probably did color code these, right? So green is going to be a different sector. I'm guessing the reds are the Republicans, right, in the network, and the blues are de- probably the Dems. Uh, size matters. Uh, centrality to the network matters. These are probably all neutral mm-hmm. neutral actors. But he ran over. I think he had like uh, 130,000 nodes, and he got it down to 1399, depending on how he set up this whole thing. I have to inspect this, but I'm just saying that, like here at Red Cliff Research, these are the things we're doing on the backside to try to understand better. Like, does this have traction? Does this is this bill going to get through? And so we do this for our clients at our data analytics firm. That's not Red Cliff's research, so this is easy for us to do here for Red Cliff. But essentially, what Tommy is trying to do for us is map the network and show us whether or not this bill is going to get through. Uh, and spoiler alert, we don't know yet. I still got to go through this, but uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's interesting, uh, and so we'll be definitely pulling it out. Richard wants to know if this is Palantir. <laughs> this is <laughs> <laughs> this is <laughs> no, it's not snake oil, so it's not Palantir. Yeah, no, this, this I don't know, works. man. This one I'm works. starting to be honestly. Palantir has a lot of commercial services. They're doing the things that I thought they couldn't get done. So I'm I'm actually I'm not bullish on Palantir, but I'm not as bearish anymore. I know their DOD shit's gonna fall off though for damn sure. Uh, the other thing that I'd say though about Palantir is man. Uh, the thing, Alex Carp gets paid too much money. Like, like, like he's like, he's so outsized in how much money he's making compared to how much the company brings in top line. Right. So it's just, I, I can't get on board with that. Like, go ahead. I salute you if you want to try, but like, I, I can't get on the Palantir trade boys and girls. Uh, uh, Kevin knows what Kijiji is. What in MTL? What Montreal, is I guess. Kijiji is in Montreal. Okay. Mm. Oh, Thomas says Canadian Craigslist. Thomas got it in there too. Oh, okay, Canadian. So I will go ahead and um, Google that. Oh yeah, mm. Canada's number one local classifier. Oh man, uh, Marcus, I'm going to add some moderators. Uh, Kevin's not a moderator. Hell yeah, he's got to be a moderator. Levi, what's up? Levi's dude? back. Welcome what back. Up, Levi? What, what? Who else doesn't have a moderator here, man? We gotta moderate some people. Man. You get a moderator. You get Luke a moderator. Luke is not even a moderator. Luke's gotta get a moderator. We gotta moderate Luke here. Better, better get you some. All right, now we're gonna be good. Goes. 
Everybody knew it was a Canadian Craigslist except for you, Marcus. What yeah, I, I guess so. I mean, yeah. All right. Well, I'm, I'm up in Detroit, so I'm close enough to uh, Canada. I mm-hmm. guess I should have known. You're ba- basically half Canadian. <laughs> Don't put oh. that on me. <laughs> All right, let's get uh, let's get out of Palantir here. Uh, yeah, get out of Palantir. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh wait, Jordan's there. Hold on, let me let me give Jordan a wrench. I gotta give Jordan a wrench. Jordan. I forgot him last time. He wasn't here on the wrench uh, wrench shout out. All right, so this is our day trade experiment version one. I want to talk to you about this because I think uh, it was missed because um, only fifty people watched it. Uh, the end up, but the closeout looks like this. So what we did is we took a hundred. We tried to take a hundred trades. We didn't. We got about like thirty trades. Right. The idea was like you know you called out a ticker and I I traded almost like ninety percent of all the tickers just to prove a point. The point is if you have a good risk to reward and uh, good accuracy uh, over time you will win. Right. Uh, we we took each trade was a hundred dollar trade. So every trade came out a hundred dollars. So point four six cents forty six cents. Uh, half of a percent right so here here i made like um 1.6 percent in mstr we made 10 percent that day two percent off of clove etc uh in the red obviously is is all the losses uh and we made 14 dollars 89 cents so like essentially 14.8 percent off of a hundred dollars in one day hundred dollar position so that's not the size of the account you get what i'm saying but i'm just trying to make the point uh because you know, in the Patreon chat, I did talk about a 1.5 percent kind of uh, kind of methodology, and you can see how that plays out here. It's it's just trying to be 1 percent, 1.5 percent. That's what it's trying to do. And so here's the audit of the breakdown, in case you were wondering. But I just wanted to show you this uh, because the mean here is uh, uh, 129 on the wins and on the loss is 87 cents. So you can see I've set it up. It's not R1 to R2, so risk to reward. Uh, you, you know, a lot of folks say two to one. I don't like two to one, but that's me personally because I know how I trade and I know how how accurate some of my trades are. So, for instance, like if you see this, uh, this is just uh, overextended support and this is uh, overextended support visually. Uh, these these are breakouts. So I've actually tracked all my uh, all my entries. So I know. I mean, and obviously, sometimes I get lazy, uh, but. But I know for sure, because this is not the first time I've done this, how accurate my entries are for certain things. So you should track this. So my breakouts are like really accurate, for instance. So if I see a breakout trade, I typically get it. One of the new things that I found from the chat was this one, uh, steady as it goes, I'm calling it, S-A-I-G. Uh, it is a new one, and so I'm definitely going to track it. I'd never taken a trade like that before, but this is what you want to do when you take trades. Okay, what's my point? I'm just going to be this real quick on this, but I do want to talk about it. Um, so uh, the idea here is, Right here. So my accuracy is, it's I'm typically around 70%, so I underperformed today. And my R1 to R2 ratio is 67%, and that's usually always 70% too. So if you watch just during the chat, I said I'm going to strive for 70%. So on a good day, 75%. But typically, I'm really right around here. So this is not uh, out of the ordinary for me. What is my point? My, my point is there's two places you can gain an edge here. So it's R1 versus R2 here, right here. And there's also accuracy. So when you're doing your system or you're trading up your system, whether it's swing trade or day trade or whatever like that, just make sure you have uh, you have a framework because the framework is going to save you. Even if you have a bad day, even if you don't do things right or or the market turns against you, the chop turns against you. Overall, you know, over time, the law of large numbers, over a million trades, you're going to be very successful. Now, if these are like 40 percent, then stop trading. Fix what's wrong. <laughs> Like, am I right, Marcus? You're a physics major. This has to do with physics, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, okay. You can make that argument in a very general sense. But um, no, this is better than a coin flip, which is what most of day trading is, right? Uh, most day trading mm-hmm. is successful 50% of the time at best. Um, so the fact that, uh, you know, it's sample size of one and we got to 66%, but... Um, that that is very encouraging because if if uh, you do let's say decide to day trade with a million dollars you end up with you know 66 percent accuracy on a million dollars that's going to be way way more of, of your um you're going to come out on top and, and you'll have better chances of success than a coin flip which is again what where you end up most of the time yeah the idea is you can add zeros here but uh michael saying cheers uh marcus so we do have the cheers ah, cheers said- Ding, ding, ding. Here's PBR. Okay, so 
here we go. Uh, wanted to talk about that now. Oh, <laughs> if you yes. didn't know, we talked about El Salvador, but the IMF sees legal and economic issues with El Salvador's Bitcoin booth. I'm saying this is bullish. What do you think, Marcus? Uh, I think it's a really good step for Bitcoin. I think this is exactly the sort of thing that needs to happen in order for it to get taken seriously and to be considered an actual tender globally. Um, mm -hmm. I do think there's going to be a lot of issues um, uh, like security wise and, and tax wise, um, but those will get worked through. And I, I, I think it's actually a really good thing. for. What do Bitcoin. you think about the uh, the IMF, though? Mm -hmm. saying this i'm saying i'm bullish on the imf saying this oh, like okay, like there's okay. concerns you get what i'm saying yeah yeah um yeah no I, again like that's that's exactly the level of scrutiny that needs to happen with bitcoin like the, the imf and other um really big financial institutions need to take a very good deep look at bitcoin and how to regulate it because until you regulate it it's not going to get taken seriously so this is a really good this is really good news for Bitcoin. It's going to suck. It's going to be a painful process and um, it's going to lose value in the short term, I'm mm -hmm. sure. But in the long term, it's going to come out on top because it will become a legal tender, I think. This is the most bullish thing that Marcus has ever said. So get ready to buy some Bitcoin when it hits 10K. <laughs> <laughs> when it loses another third of its value, then buy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that, yeah. Sorry. We should have let up. Can, I'm sorry. Can, we, can we just talk about his uh, his look here like the president of el salvador he, he looks like he's going to a baseball game with his with his kid like that's fantastic i mean it's working for us man like <laughs> i mean like smart people don't need to look smart nowadays they just need to be smart yeah, uh, yeah. but i don't know i've never listened to him talk but uh here's what he said about this um, bitcoin has a market cap of 680 billion dollars if one percent of it was invested in el salvador that would increase our gdp by 25 percent. you know this is one of those ones where it's like the difference between like if you have a small like twenty five thousand dollar account and you're trying to you uh there's two things like wealth accumulation and wealth preservation yeah the united states is in wealth preservation they don't need to take these kind of risks but like i don't hate el salvador for saying for doing this or for trying this i think this is very interesting to me because if you're if you're like that that uh the bad news bears and you're those, those underdog and you gotta you gotta do everything in your power to, to to try to make it up like what what else do you do and he's not he's actually not wrong if if you know bitcoin takes off um so i mean obviously there's a lot of concerns about this but i i don't hate it i mean what do you think marcus it is a risk oh it's a huge risk i mean if this doesn't pan out you can basically kiss his uh, you know chance of getting reelected goodbye but um if it does work out he'll be a fucking visionary like literally he will be unstoppable um so i mean yeah i i think it's a fantastic move on his part um i i also think that um Again, this is really good for Bitcoin itself. Um, getting this kind of a, attention and scrutiny, it it needs scrutiny. It, yeah. It it needs to be broken down line by line, and folks need to understand how it works and get that you know warm and fuzzy of oh okay, this is just another way to send around money, not not think that it's some magical you know online something or another. Yo, Richard, uh, Richard, number one, Hoodie Richard is coming in with the stats. This is El Salvador is basically a small city in California. Oh. We've got some real smart folks in the chat, always trying to always trying to add value. This is this is what I love about the, the Red Cliff mm. Research community. Uh, Marcus, have you thought, thought about a uh, Red Cliff Research folks? Uh, I was thinking like oh, Alpha yeah. Dogs or something like, I don't yeah. know. I no, we we, we got to I don't know, like Red Daggers. I don't know. We got to come up with some cool. <laughs> RCRs, RCRs, Red Sun, right? maybe like pirates. Uh, we'll, are, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll figure we'll it there. out. We'll get yeah, there. no. Thanks and for thanks for that, Richard. That's, that's, uh, please let us know. Yeah, that's good to know, Richard. Uh, uh, definitely, definitely good to know. Puts yeah. it in perspective for sure. But yeah, that's a million. that's a good reason for it to take that kind of risk, right? Yeah, yeah it's nothing for a city, a small city to take a risk, mm -hmm. right? It's, what would you do? Like, uh, Bitcoin drops thirty percent. Regal please people lose thirty thirty percent within five minutes. I was watching something about that having a uh, like a fail safe or what was that, like a circuit breaker for Bitcoin. I don't know. I think you just lose money. It's volatile. I mean, did you see the? They were like oh thousands of percent year over year this year so you lose 30 percent, you're still up like 500 percent. i don't i mean like yeah. okay 
Like that's why you're in there for the volatility. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah, unless you bought up top, but I didn't. Don't buy up top. Yeah. All, all <laughs> Just don't, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I don't no, know. I mean, subscribe to Redcliffe Macro Research. Yeah, don't yeah. buy up the tops. No, <laughs> you I mean, know what like, I mean. It, it's um, if if it does uh, drop thirty percent, then it drops thirty percent. Mm. Like that's kind of what folks are in it for, right? It's like um, n no, I don't know, man. Like. Like, that's what you get into Bitcoin for is the volatility. Yeah. Like it can jump as much as 5,000%, which it has this year or whatever the numbers are. It's it's a ludicrous jump, but it can also drop a ludicrous amount. So you just have to be ready for that and understand what you're getting into. I think a lot of folks get burned when they don't understand what they're getting into. They go to the bank, they take a real loan for Bitcoin that they want to play around with because they heard about it. And then they end up getting, you know, they have to pay back this loan that is you know, using a valueless mm -hmm. currency because they bought Dogecoin or whatever. Yeah, for sure. So Marcus, we've got two, 22 concurrent viewers, 13 likes. Uh, I'm giving a dollar to charity for every like. So nice. just hit the like button if you're watching. Why not? Uh, but if you guess a book on my bookshelf, I'll multiply that by 10. Last week we gave uh, uh, 250 bucks to St. Jude's because uh, Colby guessed my audio book here. I'm going to give you a clue. I'm going to pull one book just to kind of give you a clue what's on the shelf, just because I think you guys aren't guessing at all. This is Max <laughs> Boot, Invisible Armies. So go with that theme. Armies. Huh? You know what that book is about? Um, women? <laughs> Ooh. Uh, it's a case study in uh, unconventional warfare. Oh. Okay, anyways. Uh, here we go. Doge is valueless. Did you say Doge is? We're going to talk about Doge in a second here, actually. We have a slide for Doge. Mm. So hold on, Ben. We're going to get there. Uh, okay, so here's uh, interesting. El Salvador is going to offer 100% clean geothermal power for energy for Bitcoin mining. Uh, I don't believe it. I'm going to show you why I don't believe it. This looks like an interesting picture, right, Marcus? Yeah. Find another picture. Sure. Look at this. Look at this. Okay. Look at this okay. show. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I don't know what that is, but it looks like Jurassic Park or something. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. It is like our engineers just inform us that they dug a new well. Like, cool. <laughs> now we'll provide numbers, volcano emoji. Like, I don't know, man. There, there's I a lot know. going on here. I, I, you, you, you had me when you were like, hey, we're going to use Bitcoin. And now you're talking about volcanoes and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, uh, it looks like a scale version of Jurassic Park like where, <laughs> where rich, the velociraptors rich, rich. try to like like pop out and attack people. Yeah. I don't know. Marcus Richard said it looks like a graphics card. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, or a meth lab. Wow. Or yeah. a meth lab for sure. <laughs> oh shit, Jerry's in the dog. Key key dogs in the dog. In the in the chat. Hey. Ja El Salvador's president is a populist who turned into an autocrat, at least the, the German oh, wow. media says so. Yeah, I mean likely. It was like, that's why we we're talking about visionaries. I mean like Chavez was a visionary, but uh, <laughs> you know, not in the right way, kind. Yeah. Yeah. Not the right kind of visionary, right? Mm -hmm. Uh okay. No, that, that no, like if you squint, that's a graphics card for yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 for sure. Like I can see the PCB right now. Like, yeah, 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 for sure. Nice, nice, nice call. Uh, Doge in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, a local apparel store, uh, starts accepting the fame crypto. Uh, is. this is ridiculously like useless. And I don't know why I put it on here, except for the fact that I was hoping Diego would be on here. So I could tell him where to go <laughs> shop, <laughs> <laughs> but Diego has been kind of, he's kind of been loosely. He's probably got real life stuff going on. Uh, but he's been in the chat. So a little bit here, but, uh, yeah, no, you can go spend your, do your Doge coin here, bro. Like, uh, like, look, you could buy, you got vans. They, they sell vans. Okay. Um, oh, Uggs. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sell, some, That's fancy. sell some of the, the Doc Martens or something like that. Okay, okay. I mean, well, there's I mean, the I address. Would... I mean, may, maybe this will turn into another deli type situation where, uh, you know, it's actually worth $100 million billion or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure, I guess. I mean, I accept, hey, I accept Dogecoin if you guys want to sign up with Dogecoin. <laughs> like, let me, let me give, if you really want to, like, I'll open up my wallet and take some Dogecoin. Uh, <laughs> wallet somewhere, I'm sure. And, and to, to answer your question, Bem, I, I, uh, I might have implied that Doge was valueless. Um, I, I don't <laughs> think it's going anywhere. I don't think it's valueless now. I think if you have it, I don't know if maybe now might be a good time to get out because I feel like Elon's lost his uh, flame for it. And once he's out of the game, I don't see this standing up on its own. 
So here's what I'll say though, Marcus, buy a hundred dollars worth mm-hmm. hundred. Okay. No, the hundred meaning throwaway money. So like some to like $10 worth or something, if mm-hmm. you're like 21 or 18 years old yeah. uh, and leave it. It's like, it's like, you know, those Mario, those, those, uh, uh, like, um, super Mario brothers in the box is selling for like 150,000 or whatever yeah. like that. Yeah. Just save it. It's not an NFT quite, but mm-hmm. like, just, just leave it. Just leave it. Dude, that would be cool, actually, like a Super Mario's NFT. I I, I want to see that now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, Levi's going to go go to Stock Mode's channel. Damn, we oh, lost we okay. lost, we lost well, our number one subscriber because we were talking uh, about those. Well, that's okay. Hey, Levi, you know, we'll, 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 we'll still be here once. Uh, yeah. Once you when you come back, once, once, you know, he runs out of things to say about Neo, you can come back. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, Ben, I, I think we're on the same page. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Funkos. Uh, okay. Funkos. Yeah, I got my Funkos here. Hold on. We'll, uh, oh, you know what? I'm going to we'll put my Funkos up. I got one Funkos. My daughter bought me one. Yeah, I should put them the, uh, the, on the, the shelf. This guy. You. Put them next to the uh put them next to the plant. Yeah. All right. So this this guy is saying uh Everybody knows this guy. Uh, uh, AMC and GME isn't about what happens to these companies or their stocks. It's about the public, which views the stock market and the economy as something that's manipulated and not trusted. Mm. Um, what do you think about that? Uh, I have an interesting opinion about this, but what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with that somewhat. Um, yeah, it, it's it's true uh, to an extent, but it's also true that folks, I mean, I, I don't want to sound like insensitive or whatever, but I, I, I think generally speaking, people don't care about the stock market. People want mm-hmm. to worry about what they want to worry about, you know, mm-hmm. whatever that might be that day. And the stock market is a secondary concern to almost everyone who isn't actively engaged in the stock market. So, you know, I think folks, I, I would say that like 80, 75% of the population just like considers it something else that they don't even look at. And they already think that it's not to be trusted. It's already being manipulated. But then there's that 25% who are actively involved in it, who like really want to know um, what's going on. And this might influence them in that way. But yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on it. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's much the same. I think that's great. That's a great point that you made. But really, it's 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 the idea that like, hey, maybe these everybody knows it's a Ponzi scheme. But yeah. it's like a long lasting, durable one. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. idea here is though, like you don't want to break the Ponzi scheme. Yeah, uh, yeah. But the reason why it's a Ponzi scheme that works is because you you're generationally creating wealth. Like people behind you are driving up the stock price, right? But those generations behind you have generations behind them. And as long as it's durable and it lasts, it does create wealth for you. Like it really does, as long as it's a lasting institution. And so I don't know that you should always want to try to break it. Like you should want to try to get the head funds all all, all uh, riled up and and, uh, and eating their lunch. But I mean, like you can if you want. But uh, I'm just I'm just saying that like you know, if indeed you think it's a Ponzi scheme, which I mean, like if you if you look at what it is, I mean technically, technically it is, and technically it's not both at the same time, right? But uh, but my point is like there's somebody behind you to take your stock off of your hands. Like yeah. there's generations behind you. There's, there's a population of, of young folks that, you know, turn 18, like, you know, Nathan, that just got into the stock market. They need to buy stocks. They're going to buy stocks. And then, yeah. the, then his, then t- 10 years from now, folks behind him are going to buy stocks. So, mm-hmm. you know, it is, but it isn't. And it's, it's not a terrible thing. Yeah. Is all I'm saying. I mean, like uh, the, the way I've always looked at stock market is that it's it's a big calculator. Like you, you, you put your company up there and the market will figure out what it's actually worth. You know, mm-hmm. you might think, oh, yeah, this is a million dollar company. But then you send it out to the stock market and that kind of hive information mentality, like all of the thousands and millions of people who are involved in it. They're the ones who actually set the pricing. And that is actually a very accurate way of setting the pricing. And mm-hmm. so... Uh, when you get something like AMC or GME that just bounces up because, um, you know, Elon or whoever it is that says like, oh yeah, we we gotta <clears throat> we gotta boost this one, um, it's it's artificial and the calculator is getting wrong inputs and so you're 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 basically not able to get an accurate valuation. But over time, it will even out and it already has started to even out. Did you see that one of the banks, one of the banks? Uh, 
their, their analytics uh, division said that like we are no longer giving out guidance on these stocks. Like, mm. do not trust our previous guidance yeah. because these things are not trading on fundamentals, et cetera, et cetera. But like, it's I, I heard somebody over, uh, talking about it. I was like laughing about it. It's like you know, isn't that the reason why you give guidance? <laughs> like, like, yeah. like you know, yeah. like hey, this stock AMC is worth three bucks yeah. and it's trading at sixty. Yeah, maybe think about that, right? Yeah, like well, so. so like to me that's that's a big indicator that um one of our uh one big fundamental that's been missed for decades is sentiment i mean all of amc and gme's uh, valuation came from sentiment it didn't come from a change in their fundamental business practices mm -hmm. they didn't change at all it was just that a, a horde of day traders thought that it would be fun to do this so i mean that is an input in the calculator but when you start to uh, over index on it, you're gonna see skewed results. But at the end of the day, the market will be efficient and we're starting to see these uh, start to come back down. Ooh, the Keynesian theory here. Mm, I don't know, Marcus, I'm gonna argue with you a little bit here. Uh, I, got, I got a graph one of these days I'm gonna pull up. Uh, okay. That's pretty interesting. But no, actually uh, it's still Keynesian, but uh, there's a little bit of an interesting skew to it. I'm going to pull it up one of these days and get your uh, feedback on it. Okay. I, I think it's really good. It's really good. It's it's where where the imperfection lies, mm. and it's it's not where you think it is. It's it's a little bit far out there, but there's there's definitely uh, like the way they see it. I see it a little bit different, but but I'm 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 overall batshit nuts when it comes to certain <laughs> things. But uh, you get my point. Uh, back to the chat. Levi says he's gonna never gonna leave homies. Uh, Marcus, that's a cheers. Yeah, that's dude, a cheers. Totally. Levi cheers. says never gonna. Ding ding ding. Uh, Hunter Fuego says uh, he's on the Palantir trade now. What? He's on the Palantir. Guys, uh -oh. if I did nothing but Palantir videos for the next two weeks, what, would you guys be mad at me? <laughs> like, like, seriously, like, like that's a real talk, real question. Like, if you're in the chat, please tell me yes or no. Like, I need to know. I need to know. Just because. Just because. Oh, All right, here we go. You're saying that Stock Mo is on the Palantir train, not you. No, no, I know. But what if we oh. did? Oh. Because, like... I don't know if you guys knew this. Like, we made a Baba video to test the algorithm. Like, Marcus was like, "You do a Baba video," you know. Marcus is using his big brain, his juicy brain, <laughs> and uh, it got like two thousand views, and we got a ton of subscribers. So, I mean, there's something to like the algorithm, but uh, you know, pop up. The <laughs> I'd be okay for it for two weeks. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> That, that was my reaction too. That's a, that's a Jordan, good reaction. That exactly that's a reaction. good reaction, Jordan. Like, oh, that's why I love you, bro. <laughs> you uh, he's that? like, what? Two weeks? Get out of here. Oh, man. I don't think we need, I mean, I don't know. Introduce some new folks. The problem is I can't be bullish. I can be semi-bullish. It'd be a lie. I'd be semi-bullish. I'm, I'm still a little bearish. I'm still bearish, man. Uh, I think uh, Scott Gall Galloway. Is a good uh, is a good follow for for Pal well, not, not a good follow for Palantir, but he makes a good beer case for Palantir, and uh, he's he's a fucking smart guy, so definitely lean into that. Uh, they have changed a bunch of things, but man, they're paying their CEO too much, uh, and their their CTO is a little snake oil mm. Uh Okay, this is an interesting one. Who's who's bullish on space? Who's bullish on space? Uh, <laughs> Kersdale Capital published a uh, basically a short report. Not really a short report, but it says space tourism company. Kersdale says the company's technology will be surpassed by SpaceX or Blue Origin. And that alleged that Virgin Galactic has had four deaths and four serious injuries. Kersdale Capital, uh, the company's an $8 billion pretender hope, hoping to offer a souped up roller coaster ride in a world where the real thing is coming soon. Ooh. Damn. Yeah, get him, Trying Marcus. To dunk on him, huh? Dunk, Ouch. dude. What do you think? What do you think? Because we. I think that there's something personal there. Like that that's not even like a uh, hey, this is a bad business model. No, that's them saying like, Hey, you've offended me personally. Like that's the sense I get from this Carisdale report. I mean like there's going to be a lot of competition in the space um, market soon and I don't see why Virgin Galactic should be considered a uh, pretender. I mean they were one of the originals. I mean that market four deaths, four serious injuries. Uh, yeah, and that's horrible. Um, and I'm sure, unfortunately, uh, there's probably going to be more. I mean, that's a very dangerous endeavor. But I, I don't, yeah. I, I don't know if that's, um, I, I don't know if that warrants uh, name calling. 
I think this is an anti Chamath uh, Chamath uh, short seller report. Uh, mm-hmm. I think he's getting a lot of uh, uh, blowback. It's one of those ones where like you live long enough to be a hero or a villain or something mm-hmm. like that. I got that from Batman. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's good, a, good it's movie. A, good, good, movie. Good, <laughs> good, good philosophy. Batman philosophy. Yeah. No, I mean, I don't know. For, for me, that's like, Richard uh, number two. We're calling Richards are fighting for Richard yeah. number one. Richard number two. <laughs> Richard supremacy. <laughs> no, oh, I man. mean, like may, maybe the company's technology will be surpassed by SpaceX yeah. and Blue Origin, but to me, you need this competition, especially with something mm-hmm. new. Because look at what happened with Tesla. They were the only game in town for EVs. If we yeah. only have SpaceX in town for space exploration or, and space tourism, all we're going to see are like astronomical pricing. And it's it's not a good viable marketplace without at least three big players. So I mean, to me, I don't know. I I, I guess I see what they're saying, and there there is a case for Virgin maybe being uh, on the bottom of the totem pole, but calling them a pretender is is a little much. I think. Uh, ben saying uh, space is ten years out. I'm not gonna say ten years. Uh, I think you're right. Uh, I, I do agree with you, Ben, but I would say that uh, when we go to the moon uh, shortly here in two years, uh, there's going to be a big catalyst. Uh, I just think that that's going to be a big donkey pile into space stock. So I have bought in my share of space stocks based on our ETF allocation, and uh, I'm just holding. I think it's, it's going to be perfectly fine. Um, some, some of these companies are going to do really, really well coming yeah, up soon. Dude, I, I, I think this is – I mean – so much of what we're talking about now is is just the next generation right like when it comes to bitcoin when it comes to regulation for bitcoin when it comes to uh space exploration evs i mean when it comes to sentimentality being a part of the stock market like so much of this has never been done before or if it has it's been done poorly and now it's going to come to a truly professional macro level where the world's watching and is waiting and is, and is hungry for these new these these new technologies and these new things and i think a lot's going to change but i think fundamentally a lot's going to stay the same too so yeah and you know if, you, if you've read our dd like nathan did a really great dd on the space sector and and so like like yeah. he's he's completely right that's the dd that you need to get ahead of this stuff like you want somebody in that corner and you can't naturally find it out there like if you look at some of the space etfs remember that these ETFs are, are stuffing ETFs. Uh, they have weird names like Google in there, you know, like Netflix and John Deere, uh, for instance. Uh, <laughs> and I'm not really even trying to talk shit, but the idea is, you know, that they are not in your corner. So, like, when we, we, we talk about this and people like Nathan come on and, like, they know about the space sector, they're going to give you the real deal. Like, these are the names that we need to look at. Um, Bam, you said, um, why do we consider space as an investment? And then uh, there was something else that you said that I wanted to wanted to to talk about i don't see it now for some reason but uh but the idea here is there's a lot of um interesting things that can happen in space that we don't know about like the one thing that i am very interested in and i'm doing some very loose research because i have way more important things to do research on because it's still early but like i think the medical uh medically what happens in space can be completely different from what happens terrestrially right like on earth we have gravity so what does surgery look like what does uh therapies look like what does stress look like in space it may be a completely different animal it may be that you go up there and you do hot yoga for two hours and you come down to earth and you're fucking like you don't have any more PTSD. we don't know but that that's a real realistic thing because like i mean take away gravity you're you're essentially in another in another dimension like let's be real gravity is monumental to how our physiology works so we don't know what that looks like and i'm fucking guessing just as much as you but i'm telling you that's how i see it and that's why i'm kind of bullish on it could be wrong but i'm saying like i'm not parking too much money there but i mean i have my allocation and so that's why i'm that's why i'm kind of uh kind of in there so uh oh jamia to the moon yeah if you bought remember we bought on 18 dollars on, on the spike down and even here's the crazy thing you want to talk about consensus marcus likes jamia too I, I love Jumia. It's uh, yeah, that's that's one of the few stocks that I'm very, uh, very excited for. You know, when the the Marcus, when the Tommy, and when the uh, Kenny all all think of the stock, because you got the political side, the tech side, and Tommy, you got the the fundamental side, and Marcus, and you got the sentiment side, and Kenny, that stock's gonna run. So AMD, I know Marcus is bullish on that too. Jumia is another one that we're all three bullish on. So. 
definitely two really good plays. And that's why you see us talking about Jamia and AMD a lot on this channel. So, yep. Yep. energy, mining, chemistry, zero grav, et cetera. Yeah, Richard, that's that's exactly what I'm trying to say, man. Yeah. Um, okay. Wow, we did it. Oh, we did it. Oh, man. We We're did it. We made it again. Uh, let me stop presenting. Um, yeah, so really, John R says it doesn't sound too promising. Okay. That's interesting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is uh, Michael from the chat uh, was talking about um, – essentially um you know how do you do this macro research how should we be thinking about it is there going to be a move to value i, I realized that i didn't answer his question properly so i'll take some take a second to answer it here since we have some time the way that you really want to look about it is like what are like the four different indicators that are going to really move the stock market and and you know i think i'm going to do a video on this but essentially some of the some of the things that you want to look at is you know generational contraction or expansion. And so you want to follow generational cohorts that are very, very important to, to where they are at in their prime leverage years. And that's the millennials, right? So follow the millennials and follow the money. That's that's my first tip to you. The second tip is like, like you know, when you're looking at this and why we either underweight or overweight something is based on specific indicators that are headwinds or tailwinds for certain sectors. And so, you know, with the reopening trade, we really see that like discretionary wise, when we start spending money, when we start tra traveling, it is going to be a dang orgy out there. Like people are going to travel like nothing else, like you've never seen before. And this is why Marcus is super bullish on uh, cruise line stocks. I haven't talked much about them, but I generally agree. People are going to go nuts. They're going to go everywhere because we're going to travel and you need energy to do that. We still haven't. <laughs> There's no electric ships right now, okay? <laughs> like, let's let's be clear. There's no electric cruise, cruise ships or cruise lines, no electric airplanes yet. So with that said, you know, energy needs to be consumed. People are going to move around, move about, and uh, it's a big play for us. That's why we're really heavy on OIH. So, I mean, hey, five-year prediction at AMD, Jamia, higher gains. Oh, <clears throat> it's going to be uh, – like, you know, I made a video that said 28X, 28X Jamia. I really wasn't kidding. Like, it's totally possible. I mean, it might take 10 fucking years, but it's really possible. I, like, I, I, and it I depends think, on my – Dude, I, I, I think Jamia wins that fight. I, I think Jumia is going to win the uh, the higher gains uh, versus AMD because they don't have any real competition. Not yet, anyway. And by the time they do, they're going to be so much further ahead of that competition that they're going to steamroll them. So I, I'm – uh, I'm going to answer straight up, say Jumia. That's a good. I mean, I agree with Marcus. I'll tell you one thing, though. In the midterm, in the short term, I'll tell you what. There's a reason why I keep talking about Jumia. Um, there are indicators flashing for us right now, and I know it hasn't really paid off yet. But uh, you know I'm a sentiment guy, and we do sentiment analysis. There are flashing indicators that are saying that sentiment-wise, they're not quite getting credit for what they're doing or what they deserve. So I feel like if that does happen and we doggy pile into AMD, like like it should, uh, there's a couple things that I'm not going to say on the air, uh, and not because it's like secret or proprietary, but I just it's just controversial that I think that is going to happen with AMD that is going to send the stock price to the moon. I think it's we're primed and we're early, but in the next one two years, I think uh, AMD uh, will will pull. I don't want to say a Tesla like move, but something pretty 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 aggressive and i think i want to be there for the ride is why i'm uh, completely full on amd and so that's my thesis do your own research uh if you want to guess you know I, you know if you want to message me on the slack personally i'll 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 tell you if it's yes or no uh, but i really don't want to say it publicly but there, there's definitely some things i'm looking at that, uh, that i think uh, can move the price of amd very high so oh good that's cool soy guts Soy guts, yeah, the uh, the that? oil soy guts. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 spigots, spigots, yeah, spigots. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So to answer your question, Richard, yeah, um, they they can just turn the oil on, but who's gonna buy it? You know, when it when it comes to Russia and uh, the Saudis, we have a good relationship with, and most of the West does as well. But Russia in particular, um, they sell most of their stuff to um, to Europe, and Europe is doesn't have a great relationship with them right now. So mm. they could flood the market, but um, I mean, honestly, that would only help because we're, it's, it's a, there, there's enough demand for it, I think. 
Yeah, the the idea here is for the the whole OIH thing is like again they they can't turn the spigots on because there's been capex deficit for the last five years. We've talked about this about a hundred times, so I'm not going to go deep into that. But the idea is that's the deficit that I'm making my play on. Second piece is W2I crude versus Brent versus all this other stuff is completely different. So WTI is the one that we're watching, which is linked to OIH. So WTI is West Texas Intermediate, which is Texas and the intermediate states that have the oil rights. So those companies, right? So the companies who drive oil from there. And what we're saying is they have to charge a premium for oil, whether it, and, and, and it's true if OPEC turns it on uh, or private equity turns it on that, you know, the price could get substantially lower, uh, but it's not happening. And, and so, you know, there's still going to be that margin. And there was actually a really good white paper from an independent research firm that we were looking at uh, on the on the, on the uh, stock singles chat. I uh, can't remember who shared it, but it was really good share. I uh, read through it. But, uh, yeah, the, the idea is, though, even with that turned on, you're still going to see a deficit. And you're still – here's the biggest thing. Between now and July, even if you don't think it's a great long-term play, July when everybody goes to Disney World, when everybody gets on the, the cruise ships, when everybody starts traveling, energy – period oil is going to go off to the moon there's going to be an expansion contraction and you're going to at least get that burst and so that's my thesis and that's why i'm holding strong i still still very constructive on oil i think still think the iranians are going to be very constructive they're not going to they've already got a pissing match with russia in the last couple of years for for a while uh, the most recent one almost got them both go, go bankrupt so i don't think they're going to do it again and if i'm wrong then yeah i'm willing to take that wager but that's that's kind of where I'm at on that, Marcus. What do you, what do you think? Do you... Yeah, no, the 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 Russians and the Iranians are hurting financially right now. Uh, they can't really afford to take any risks, so I don't see them taking risks, especially when it comes to the one, um, their 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 one real um, resource that they have. I mean, they they don't export really anything of value outside of oil. Russia's um, doesn't have like a big manufacturing footprint. They don't have like a big, you know, cultural export. They don't have like a Hollywood, you know. Um, so to them, it's 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 all gas. It's all oil. And the same thing with the Saudis. Um, you know, they they don't have some other industry that they're that they can lean on if the oil goes south. So um, they're they're or excuse me, Iranians. Um, and and especially with their Iran, Iran, they've got all kinds of sanctions still hanging over their heads from. Um, the past the U.S. Past administration, US administration. The, the Trump administration, the Obama administration, the Bush administration. I mean, Iran has been um, kind of in the the, uh, the the crosshairs when it comes to sanctions for decades. And so they're kind of used to it, but it also means that they've got a big um, a big squeeze on their wallet and it sucks for them. Like they can't they can't play yeah. because of that. Yeah. All right. Well, Marcus, I'm going to give you a guess since nobody else guessed a book. I'm going to give you a guess. There's only 17 likes. So even if you get this like this right, it's only 170 bucks to, to, to the charity of our choice here, which yeah. we'll probably do like something like the Special Operations Warrior Foundation today. Mm -hmm. So go for it. Marcus, guess a book and I'll tell you if it's on there. I'll take audio books too. Oh, okay. Um, uh, the the, the Counterinsurgency uh, Operation Manual. Shit. I mean, this is kind of it. Hey, there Is you this go. The operating concept. Yeah. Right, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Hey. <laughs> all right, 170, 170, the charity of choice. All right, uh, all right, cool, man. Uh, hey, everybody, thanks for coming. Uh, nah. Love hanging out with you guys. We've got a bunch of smart folks in here, and so hey, Marcus, take us out, brother. Yeah, thanks everybody for spending your uh, your afternoon, your evening, your your days with us. Um, really appreciate your time. You could have been anywhere in the world, so. Uh, really love spending this hour with you. Um, if uh, if you want to support us some more, take a look at our, our Patreon so we can get you more involved in our community uh, in in the Slack chat. And um, yeah, thanks again. Uh, I hope to hope to see you again next week. Thanks everybody. Bye.